Hello friends, uh, once we have learned the physiology of uh, temperature regulating mechanisms in the body, then the next step would be to understand the illnesses related to the temperature regulation. Now this video is on heat related illnesses, uh, but before that I would advise you to go through the video on temperature regulation in the body. Uh, let's see these illnesses uh, starting from the basics. Under normal circumstances, we have a fine balance between heat generation in the body and heat loss from the body. Uh, we generate heat because of the BMR and physical activity, etc. And there are heat loss mechanisms. And there is a fine balance between the two so that uh, the body temperature is held constant uh, at the normal level, 37 degrees centigrade, etc. But then, if this balance is tilted, I mean, for instance, heat generation becomes excessive in the body and it overwhelms the heat loss mechanisms. Then the body will start gaining heat and the body temperature will rise. So uh, that's where uh, heat illnesses, heat related illnesses would occur. Now, just one point to be understood here is that we have a shell temperature which is a surface temperature and it can change with the environmental temperature. But we need to keep the core temperature constant. Core temperature is temperature within, I mean deep within that is uh, temperature of the tissues. That needs to be kept constant so, uh, so that the cells and tissues uh, function optimally. If that temperature is disturbed, then uh, there is going to be a lot of disturbance uh, of the homeostasis and you know, homeothermy. So therefore, this is what happens and uh, uh, it results in the heat illnesses. There are four uh, types of uh, heat illnesses and this is a spectrum of those illnesses. Starting with the milder forms like heat cramps and then heat syncope, then uh, progressing to heat exhaustion and heat stroke will be the severest form and uh, if not if for example if heat exhaustion is not treated uh, timely then it may progress to the heat stroke so this is a, an entire spectrum and as you can see the first two the milder illnesses where core temperature is not elevated that's a good sign that the core temperature is not disturbed not elevated whereas the next two are the severe forms in which there is elevation of the core temperature. I just repeat once again that uh, the entire purpose of homeothermy is to maintain the core temperature constant, but it gets elevated in the last two illnesses. Uh, if the core temperature is elevated, it may be because of the uh, exposure to excessive heat, heat generation in the body, but uh, there are other conditions which have, have to be kept in mind, uh, which may also lead to increase of core temperature like drug overdose, septicemia, malaria, malignant hyperthermia or thyroid storm. These are some of the other conditions. But uh, we are now interested in the conditions in which exposure to excessive heat uh, overwhelming the heat loss mechanisms in the body causing these heat related illnesses. Right. Uh, there are two types as we can categorize these illnesses. There are two types. One is non-exertional heat illness, N-E-H-I. Non-exertional means there is high environmental temperature and thermoregulatory mechanisms are not functioning optimally. This is one likely, uh, I mean, likelihood or possibility where there is a environmental temperature uh, which is very high and the body normally under normal circumstances tackles it by causing heat loss from the body. But if in some individual uh, the temperature regulatory mechanism is not functioning optimally, for example uh, elderly individuals or if there is some comorbidity or the person on medications, there are certain drugs which are known to cause disturbance in the temperature regulating mechanisms and therefore that exposure to high uh, environmental temperature is uh, the body is not able to tackle that. The other type is 
exertional heat illness. Look, in the first instance, the person was not, is not exerting himself or herself. It's just the high environmental temperature which is causing increased body temperature. But in the second one, exertional heat illness. In this, there is heat production because of the exertion. And this heat ex uh, exertional heat production, it overwhelms the body's heat dissipating mechanisms. So, uh, first instance was just high temperature, the first uh, type. The second type is where there is high temperature plus body is exerting too much. And uh, for example, this happens in the athletes where excessive physical exertion and so much heat production in the body that heat loss mechanism or heat dissipation from the body is just unable to cope with it. When we are exposed to high environmental temperature, there is also heat acclimatization. Body is trying to cope with uh, this heat stress. What happens here is there is increased sweat volume. You know, as the sweat evaporates from the skin, uh, the temperature is decreased. I mean, there is cooling effect. So, there is increased sweat volume with reduced sweat sodium content. This is a sign of acclimatization. How the body is acclimatized to the heat is that sweat volume has increased, but sodium content of the sweat has decreased. So, sodium is being conserved. Plus, there will be an increased aldosteronism or rather increased aldosterone levels. This is a secondary aldosteronism because increased sweat volume means uh, this sweat has been lost from the ECF, from the plasma. So, uh, plasma volume has decreased temporarily and in response to that, the aldosterone will come into action. And this is to maintain the body's sodium levels. Now, let's come to the heat illnesses from the milder forms to the severe forms. The mild form of heat illness is heat cramps. We all must have experienced heat cramps at, uh, at uh, some point of li uh, in life. So, uh, vigorous exercise performed, there was profuse sweating in the hot weather. Now, what happens is, there is decrease in the ECF sodium. Excessive sweat loss has occurred and from the sweat, there is loss of sodium chloride and therefore decrease in the ECF sodium. This a uh, disturbance in the electrolyte is said to be the result, uh, the cause for painful muscle spasms. So, there are painful cramps or painful muscle spasms because of the fluid and electrolyte disturbance and this condition is called as heat cramps. Uh, just one point to be noted here that this may get exacerbated if only water is replaced. So, always remember if there are heat cramps, then just uh, do not take only water, but it should have also an adequate amount of sodium. Otherwise, what will happen, I have just mentioned it quickly, if only water is taken, only water is consumed uh, in this condition, it may result in something called as dilutional hyponatremia. That is, this is sodium, this is water. Now, the water has increased excessively and therefore, relatively the sodium concentration becomes less and resulting in uh, the dilutional hyponatremia. So, that is a milder form. The second uh, heat related illness is heat syncope. You know, syncope is fainting attack. Now, what happens here is somewhat similar to a uh, vasovagal syncope, there is fainting attack. In the high, uh, of course, uh, the reason for vasovagal syncope is, uh, there are different reasons for that, but uh, mechanism is somewhat similar. When there is exposure to high ambient temperature, it results in peripheral vasodilation. And peripheral vasodilation means there will be pooling of blood in the peripheral parts of the body. That means venous return to the heart will decrease. There would be decreased cardiac output and blood pressure, decreased cerebral blood flow and resulting in the syncopal attack or fainting. 
सो हीट सिंकोपी इज अनदर फॉर्म ऑफ हीट इलनेस नाउ लेट्स लुक एट दी द सीवियर फॉर्म्स मोर सीवियर फॉर्म्स एंड वाई डू वी कॉल इट सीवियर बिकॉज द कोर टेम्परेचर इज गोइंग टू बी डिस्टर्ब फर्स्ट ऑफ देम इज हीट एग्जॉशन नाउ वेन डज दिस हैपन प्रोलॉन्ग एक्सर्शन in the hot and humid environment so exposure to the very hot and humid uh, environment for prolonged periods and if there is inadequate replacement of fluid and electrolytes particularly water and sodium is not replaced and if you are performing some kind of exercise uh, or excessive physical exertion for a longer duration it may result in this condition called as heat exhaustion and mind you the core temperature is going to be disturbed generally uh, see the normal body temperature is 37 degree centigrade if the core temperature is increased from 37 to 40 degrees it results i mean somewhere in this range it results in heat exhaustion and if the core temperature goes beyond 40 degrees the severest form would be the heat stroke we'll talk about it later so uh, as we said just now there would there is elevation of core temperature core temperature rises and it's in the range now in 37 to 40 degrees what are the various signs and symptoms uh, the dehydration of course because of the sweating water has been lost from the body there would be signs of dehydration in the form of irritability headache uh, fatigue weakness and of course as a compensatory mechanism there will be tachycardia and the blood picture will be of dehydration now you must have we have done this in the physiology that if water is lost then uh, now this time sodium water if the water has gone down that means relatively the sodium concentration will be higher so blood picture will be of signs of dehydration in the form of increased sodium uh, concentration because water has gone down increased urea and uh, of course these are mild changes uh, not very severe but mild increase in uh, sodium concentration uh, mild increase in hematocrit uh, well pcv so if the plasma volume goes down relatively the packed cell volume or hematocrit will be higher how do you manage this condition there are two things that need to be kept in mind one is body temperature of course you uh, you have to look at the core temperature and two the fluid and electrolyte balance so temperature bring the patient to the cooler environment immediately uh, when you see the signs of uh, heat exhaustion remove the patient from that uh, environment or that temperature bring the patient to the cooler environment and uh, there is one term that is used strip spray and fan this is a form of evaporative cooling that is uh, don't cover the body with too much clothing you can remove the excessive clothing and then spray it with uh, tepid uh, uh, water or tepid fluid and then uh, put the fan around the body so that there is active evaporation of that fluid uh, from the skin and therefore there will be faster cooling of the temperature body temperature and the second one is fluid replacement as we saw uh, as you are trying to bring the temperature back towards normal also uh, think about the fluid replacement by giving ors or iv saline so that's uh, heat exhaustion but remember the reason for heat exhaustion is excessive uh, exposure or prolonged uh, exposure to the high ambient temperature along with the physical exertion and then finally the severest form that is heat stroke now this is commonly asked at the university level as a short note uh, heat stroke so let's see and uh, we have already said that at uh, along the spectrum 
there were milder forms like heat cramps then heat syncope possibly it may progress uh, to the heat exhaustion and if heat exhaustion is not identified and treated on time uh, then it may progress to heat stroke and this is quite a life threatening situation so we have already mentioned if heat exhaustion is not treated it may progress to heat stroke there is increase in the core temperature uh, heat exhaustion had core temperature from 37 to 40 if the core temperature goes beyond 40 it may uh, it may be the condition of heat stroke there will be signs and symptoms like headache nausea vomiting sweating will be absent in this individual because now there will be failure of the thermoregulatory mechanisms you know as the temperature core temperature rises the tissues and cells they are not functioning optimally or not functioning at their normal level and therefore failure of the organ functions is likely one of them is failure of the thermoregulatory mechanisms so you won't see the person sweating although if you touch the skin it is going to be very very hot but uh, without any uh, sweat there will be uh, neurological manifestations in the condition of heat stroke for example tremors there will be coarse tremors mental confusion and uh, either the person will be very aggressive or it may be loss of consciousness and further complications if it is not treated on time then there may be further complications in the form of lactic acidosis or uh, rhabdomyolysis now this is a skeletal muscle injury and uh, it's because of an excessive temperature around the skeletal muscle tissue so uh, injury to the skeletal muscle and release of uh, some chemicals some substances from the muscle tissue into the blood that is rhabdomyolysis at least if you remember myo and lysis myo is muscle lysis is breakdown so you can remember it that way there may be liver failure or uh, uh, renal impairment kidney failure and there's a possibility of either cerebral edema or pulmonary edema so these are the complications of heat stroke and finally let's see the management again just as in the case of heat exhaustion even in the case of heat stroke you will have to think about two things one is about the body temperature and the other one is fluid and electrolyte balance so uh, for the body temperature use the method of rapid evaporative cooling as we uh, saw in the case of heat exhaustion uh, sponging having water or fluid on the skin and then by using a fan use the evaporative method so that uh, the water evaporates from the skin and it reduces the temperature or ice packs in the axilla and groin of course these are in addition to removal of the patient from uh, the environment uh, environment of high temperature bring the patient to the cooler environment and then in addition you can do this fluids iv fluids they say cold crystalloids uh, are to be infused of course uh, over gelous treatment needs to be avoided remember this that excessive aggressive fluid administration might result in pulmonary edema or other complications so this was about the heat stroke uh, its manifestations and uh, its management reference for all of this of course i had used uh, uh, normal physiology books but in addition to that the material was also referenced from Davidson's Principles of uh, and Practice of Medicine, uh, 21st edition.